You're welcome to the broadcast of Restoration Provision Ministries International, where people are being restored to God's original plan and purpose for their lives. We are a home where God is restoring fathers to their children and children to their fathers, and where God is raising genuine leaders for our generation. It is our prayer that God will open the eyes of your understanding and bring illumination to every area of your life through this word. Shall we turn our Bibles to Job chapter 1? I will encourage everyone to read it, the whole of chapter 1, but for the sake of time, we're just going to read a very long scripture from verse 13 to 22. The book of Job chapter 1 from verse 13 to 22 let's hear the word of god now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house and a messenger came to job and said the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them when the sabians raided them and took them away indeed they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword and i alone have escaped to tell you while he was still speaking Another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the, and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels, and took them away, yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Verse 18. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. And sorry, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all these Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. Can you just read this? <laughs> Job chapter one, verse three. Also his possessions were seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels. 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Amen. Amen. So we see that God actually was bragging about Job. For God to say that he was a blameless an upright person. He feared the Lord and he was the richest in all the region. Some of us, we see small money then our attitude changes. Even our walking change. <laughs> he was the richest in the whole region. Let's say the whole of Europe. He was the richest man. But he was blameless, upright. He made sacrifices continuously for his children. For himself. And the Bible says that God was proud with him. He did not commit sin. He did not do anything, yet evil came upon him because of his goodness. And in all of these things, the Bible said, he bowed down and worshipped. We're going to look at excellence through worship. Job was a man of excellence. He understood who God is. He understood what worship is. You know, many a time I've said this before, when we come to church and they play fast song, that is praise. When they, the tempo is slow, that is Worship, absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. That is not worship. So we, th we think that worship has everything to do with the tempo of the song, etc. 
But people of excellence don't worship God because of the hedge of protection around them. They don't worship God because of the provision. They don't worship God for anything, any other reason, but for one good reason, for who God is and all what we are going through. I don't know whether you've been, I don't know of any of us who are anything close to where Job was. Hmm. They said, whilst he was talking, your children are dead. Whilst you are talking, you've lost all your possessions. Whilst you are talking, another thing is happening. Well, and then he got up. Did the tradition, shave his head, and what happened? He said, he worshipped. And in all of that, he did not what? Sin with his lips or neither in his heart. People of excellence worship God because of established relationship. You don't worship God because of what you can get from God. As a matter of fact, when I got born again, they say when I come to God, God will provide that. So my only reason for coming to Christ is because I want to get something from God. And many of us just pray, which is also an act of worship, when we need something from God. When everything is going well, Forget God. When things get going bad, there is a God in heaven that answers prayer by fire and by force. But we forget what God actually requires. Why did God create to have a relationship with us? Until we have that established relationship, we will not work in excellence. Job knew who God is. And he knew and who he was. Who is God to you? Are we just looking at just our provider? I like the way what Job did. He said he worshiped God. And what did he say? He gives and he takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My goodness. Situations come, and how many of us will just go down and worship God and say, Blessed be the name? How many of you know that song? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, sir. You are not singing this song when everything is high. Every, you are singing it when you are in pain. So now let's know, I, I, I'm going back, let's find out what is actually worship. What is worship? Let's look at Genesis chapter 18. The book of Genesis chapter 18 from verse 1 to 2. Then the Lord appeared to him by the ter terebinth tree of Mamre. And he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the ground. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter two, uh, chapter twenty-four, verse seventeen. Second Chronicles chapter. Second Chronicles chapter twenty-four, verse seventeen. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, the leaders of Judah came and bowed down to the king, and the king listened to them. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 6. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Then all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Amen. Amen. Actually, the word worship means to bow down. And that's what people do when you go before a king in my village. You bow down to the king. 
It's a sign of paying homage to the person. People come to the queen, they do the same thing, right? So when you come before a person of authority, you bow down. So worship simply means that you bow down. In other words, you are, sub, you are, you are actually not, uh, you are not, you are subjecting flesh, your, own, your whole being to the authority of God. So that involves your whole being and what you have. Mr. D was talking about the, temp uh, uh, the, the temple last time, and he was talking about the ark that was built in the temple. And you see the ark, what is, uh, the, sorry, the altar. What is the altar made for? Sacrifices. And where is sacrifices? In the holies of holies, uh, before the holies of holies. And what, that means that the, our top, every, all of us, I'll, I'll be teaching on this, God willing, how to build an altar. All of us are supposed to have an altar in our hearts. Where we offer sacrifices, where we bring ourselves there. How dare you come before God and think you are. Sometimes worship is going on and you're just saying this. Do you know what? You've lifted up your, your heart above God. Nebuchadnezzar. His son did the same thing. And the parable Jesus gave in the book of Luke. In the book, in the gospels, also talk about the person. So, anytime at all, our attitude, the attitude behind our bowing down is more important than the art itself. Mm -hmm. God does not judge the art, He judges our attitude. So, you can, we can come here and sing all the nice songs. Our attitude towards singing is actually important, our attitude towards bowing is important, our attitude towards dancing is important. Because that is the act of worship. Not the action alone. So when you come before a person of authority and you know that my attitude is wrong. Do you know that sometimes you can give something to someone and the person's attitude will determine whether the person appreciates it or not? Because most of the time we are looking at somebody's attitude rather than the act. This involves being in the presence of a superior or someone with authority. What can you do that will make your attitude so bad that God will not? You know what? I believe that Cain's offer was actually not of the ground, but his attitude towards it. Why do I know he has an attitude? When God was even talking to him, he said, Where's my brother? Am I my brother's keeper? He said, if you see lies on your door, if you, you rule his, you look at him, he said, the way the guys, what was coming out of his lips actually shows what was in his heart. His attitude was actually wrong, of bitterness. So whenever we offer something which is of a wrong attitude, it's not pleasant offering at all. So our prayers will not be a sweet smelling aroma to God, like Mr. D was teaching last week or two weeks ago and two weeks ago, it would not be except if our attitude is wrong. Do you know you can even pray in church? Pray is a, prayer is a form of worship. And because you've seen somebody, your, your, even your tempo increases. Shaka, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. And that's because you've seen someone. That is already wrong. You are just wasting your energy, exercising. That is not worship. An act of worship at all. And somebody can pray inside quietly and God will honor that because God is watching the attitude of the act of worship. But as when we say we are praying here, you should not you know, know what I mean. Our act is very important. Worship involves meeting with God on his term, not ours. Mm. God wants us to come to him based on what he expects from us, not what we want to. Those of you in university, when they are giving you, uh, you want to upload your assignment, there is a format. If it's not in that format, it will reject it. Because there are always terms and conditions for every single thing we do. We don't come to worship God based on our time. 
you worship God based on his stand because he is God and he was, we are his subjects. He created us for what? So why did God create us so that we can serve him? And if you are coming from the heart of servantship or hood, if there's an English word like that, then you come closer to God with your heart and your mind together, knitted together, fused with the scriptures, what God is saying and not what we, we are not going there because, okay, uh, uh, to enter into the throne room, I start with worship, okay. Uh, now, how many of you have woke up from bed and you have a song in your heart? Because God, Spirit, it doesn't matter whether you are 99 years old or you are 3 years old. God's Spirit is the same in you. It's up to us to tune in and worship God. We can cover our all up and come here and look good. But God, look at us as we are. Mm -hmm. True worship is authentic. So if our worship is going to be rejected or not depends on our attitude. All the people we saw, Abraham saw angels, he bowed down. Ezra, Nehemiah, and all the people when we saw, they bowed down, they lifted up their hands and they worshiped God and blessed the name of the Lord. And when uh, uh, Job, things went wrong, what happened? Do you know we are about we bow, we worship human beings as well. That's why I put in the Chronicles one there. You can worship a human being and not worship God. The same attitude we give to a king is the same of the earth. We are supposed to give more to our God and King. How do we worship? The book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that, sorry, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. See, if you read through the Bible, there were three more of, four, I think I've identified four, but I'll give you three or two for now. If you look through at the Bible, there were two acts of worship, more than that, but I'll give you two, okay? That brought the presence of God down. In Second Chronicles 5, the present worship, when the instrument, everybody did were one, the presence of God came down, the priest could not minister. In 2 Chronicles 7, uh, when Solomon prayed, the presence of God came down. Okay? In Exodus 38, when the, uh, 40 as well, when, uh, when Moses consecrated the children of Israel, what happened? The glory of God came down. Moses could not do anything. Do you know that we can think that the singing alone is a worship and prayer is not worship? Can we, do you know that when Solomon offered all the bulls and everything, the presence of God came down, fire came down, consumed it? So we can do everything, but then we don't worship. So you worship God with the substance, you worship God from your heart, you worship God through prayer, you worship God through your reading of Bible, you worship through songs. Our lifestyle. But in the olden days, what happened was that they had... An altar where what? They kill animal, they drain the blood, they put the animal on the sacrifice. They were dead. <laughs> Is that right? Mm. But it says we are living sacrifice. Mm. In other words, I am alive, but it is not me that lives. It's Christ that lives in me. So you are a living sacrifice. We are a living sacrifice, which means that what I want doesn't matter. So the art of worship is doing, going by the terms of God. What is the term of God for your life? What are the rules God has placed before us to follow? And when we do that, the art of bowing down is the art of submission. I submit my will to the a will of you. Can you imagine? The one thing I told you before, the one thing none of us can, can cope with is rejection. 
Even Jesus Christ couldn't cope with rejection. Say, Father, 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 why have you forsaken me? Huh? But what did he say? Say, Father, in the garden, when he was struggling, he said, nevertheless, not my will. Because even at that time of pain, he submit, subjected his will to the authority. Submission is a key to worship. So you can never worship God without honoring God or expressing who he is by submission of our will to the authority of his will. In other words, worship costs us so that God can enjoy by benefits. You see, David, David one time wanted to make a sacrifice after war, after God has spared them. And he, he went to this person. He said, let me, give me your <coughs> land. Let me uh, offer something. Uh, no, I want to buy the man. So they take it. So no, David said, I will not offer anything to God that will not cost me. A true worship will always cost you something. A true worship will always cost something because you can't be submissive, submissive, and then we not you lose your own will, you lose your pride. There are things that you have to say. You go back to God. Can you imagine? Jesus created the universe. He was there from the beginning, and throughout his life, he's always been there to make atonement for pe for people. Remember when uh, 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 Abraham was going to kill the son? Mm. And you know what Jesus said? Abraham saw this. He was referring to that. Mm. Because he had an encounter. And in, uh, 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 on the, uh, 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 Paul had a revelation that on the on people seen, what happened? They wanted rock. He became the rock. He followed them through the wilderness. And each time they hit him, they did everything. Yet he, he submitted way from the Old Testament all the way to bring deliverance to the people he created. Wow. That is worship. That's why God said, the Bible said, God exalted him above all. How many of us want the devil to be under our feet? Do you know it doesn't come, it comes by first submitting to God and you resist the devil. So when you come, when you bring your authority to the under the authority of God, you are under his covering. This is the time we are living in a dangerous time. The time we are coming to the end. The time we are living now, it's only going to take people who submit to God totally that will enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. I said, when Jesus Christ was teaching us, he said, your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth. As it is established in where? Heaven. So until we link up our submission to the authority of heaven, we will not see the glory of God. That is no worship. So we have a life full of confusion, everything and now and then. Why? Because we have not submitted to the authority of God. So our whole life is a living sacrifice. When we say living sacrifice, our whole life. Our whole life is what? what? That means you'll be sacrificing, you are on an altar, you are not dead, but you are submitting your, you have nothing. So you are practically a robot. So do we, whatever the Spirit of God tells you, that's what you do. Not what I want to do. How many of you have been really tired? And you really, maybe you want to wake up and pray. And you've made a simple prayer. Father, give me strength to wake up tomorrow to pray. And at that time you wake up and you are just as fresh as someone who has gone to Peter and come back. Okay? Why? Because at that particular time, you've submitted your authority of your will to the will of the Father. And he takes over. So until we've learned to come to that Please, when we subject what we do to the authority of God's will, we will never have a living. Our life will not be a living sacrifice. We will not have the peace that comes from his throne. We will not experience what we are supposed to experience. Because what? From out of every sacrifice, the lamb has no will of his own. It's killed 
In the olden days, they even lay a hand on the uh, hands or they transfer the sin to the goat and they throw the goat away. They break their legs, all kinds of things. And I, I was trying to imagine all of these things. And I said, the kind of, the, what Jesus Christ has done for us. And all we have to say that, yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the death of my soul, I said what? Yes, Lord. Completely, yes. My soul says, yes. That is where we want to come to. Sacrifice is the first fruit of our action. What's the first fruit? The first fruit is what first comes out of the ground. So whenever, whatever comes out of us, first of all, should not be anger, should not be hatred, should not be malice, should not be murder. What comes out of what? Sacrifice. It comes out of what? Worship. The first thing that comes out of us should be what? Sacrifice to the Lord. Sacrifice is the first fruit of our, our action. That should be the first fruit of all our actions. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Restoration, we do that very well, but we can up it a bit. Is that right? Sacrifice. The first fruit is very important. You see, when people think about the first fruit, they think about just the money and anything. But our sacrifice to God is what God is looking for. That's why he said, give me the first bones, the first fruit. The first fruit is about him. He will have to make the sacrifice to God, not what necessarily money we give into God. When you wake up, what's the first fruit? Thank you, Father, for giving me air. But do you know if you want to do something, you find time to do it. God said, before you think about anything, give me the first fruit. The first fruit. That's why when we wake up in the morning, the first thing that should come out of our lips is thank you, Father, for this day. You know, when we, when we got born again, we had a, a song. Thank you, Lord, for a brand new day. Show me your love in a brand new way. I'm so thankful I want to say thank you, Lord, for a brand new day. You know, at least uh, you cannot even pray, but you go to, you sing a song like that. What is he saying? First thing in the morning, I'm giving my first fruit to God because that's my first action for the day. But, oh, you can go this way. You wake up, the first thing you do is to look at the time and say, ah, this day again. Look at the weather. Oh, Lord, what a day. And what are we giving up? We are actually starting the day with morning. And what does God hate? Murmuring. The sacrifice was holy, pure. Our Job was blameless, upright, man of integrity. Whatever we give out has to come from a pure vessel. Can you drink out of a dirty vessel? Jesus gave that example. So you cannot drink from a dirty cup. Even when you go to somebody's house, they give you a mug that is half chipped or chip to the side, we threw it aside, isn't it? They have much more what is coming from our heart to our Father. That's a blast. Knocking. Let's clean our hearts. Mr. Lawrence, he says, we go and do something, I come and leave hands. It's a holy hands, it's all holy hands. That's true. Sacrifice, I think I've said, sacrifice can only be made from that which is clean without blemish. A life well pleasing. When you say a life well pleasing, what does it mean? It's not just pleasing. Well pleasing, which means that it's from a congruent heart, a clean, and it's by God's rules. So that's why I say worship is a whole lifestyle. Not just singing, not just praying. It's a lifestyle. How we react to situations, how what we show outside there. That is what? Worship. At work. Worship. It says a reasonable service. A life 
of integrity, a life well pleasing, a life of uh, honesty, a life of uh, maturity, a, ma a life of excellence is always what God is looking for. Mm. In fact, if you look at the original Greek of that word, it actually means a life with a service with a reason. When God said, this is a, our acceptable, reasonable service to the Lord. A life that is laid on the altar. A life that God's fire continually is burning on it. You see, we cannot have a fire burning all until we've learned to worship. Until we've learned that our life is a life of worship. So, I just want to reiterate this point. It said, worship comprises of what? Submission, Submission service, service, and reverence. reverence. So, let's say that. Worship, worship is that which comprises of what? Service, 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 and what? Reverence. So, restoration, what are we going to do next time in, in worshiping God? What are we saying? Submit. Serve and we reverence God. You see, so that means that worship is not only made up of just adoration, but it's also made up of what? Action. Worship is made up of what? Both adoration, that with our lips and our action, our attitude and what we do, all together make a fruitful worship. People of God, can I, can I, can I be, can I, can I stay the waters? Mm -hmm. You know that you can be, okay, let me put it this way. One aspect that is not correctly uh, define the other. There's a typing, this, there's a space in between. But if you want to find a new word, that's fine. Okay, one aspect. So you cannot say that ah, for me, prayer is my thing. Then you take prayer. As for me, the song. And then, no, no, it's a present worship. So we think that prayer is not present worship. But do you know that set up is also present worship? Yes. Because it's also a service to God. Everything we do has to be a service to God. From driving, packing up, everything is all part of the worship we give. You cannot do one and neglect the other. Lord, we repent. Thinking that one aspect of acts of worship is all adoration and actions together make worship. I was telling Jaron something the other day. I said one thing I want to see till the, 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 when he's 50 years old, if by God's grace I'm alive, I want to see that. I want him to continue to come early. He comes early, he wants to set up his stay, and then he wants to come and play his keyboard, uh, uh, rehearse with the prayer, prayer team, and he wants to come back and do his work. That is what he wants to be part of it. That is total worship. That's what we should be teaching our children. Total worship. That is why we have the children playing every role. As fast as they can, they play a major role in anything we do. Because what? That is art of worship. Shall we rise up? Thank you for watching. We trust you have been blessed by the message. If you have any question or need clarification as a result of the message, please email info at rpmint.org. For our meeting times and places, please visit our website, www.
rpmint.org for further details.